Supervis introduced a new real time feature, and we're calling it Broadcast from Database. It's a scalable and flexible way of listening to real time changes happening on the database. And when I say flexible, I mean we can finally listen to joint queries. Let me show you how it works. Within the real time schema, we've added a new table called the messages. A real time server automatically detects new roles incident into this table by listening to the write ahead log changes. When it does detect a new role, it then takes a payload and broadcasts it to the specified channel using real time broadcasts that we already had. The client can listen to those changes by listening to the broadcast event on that channel. So basically, all we have to do is to insert a set of payloads into the real time messages table in order to broadcast it to a specified channel. And to help you do that, we introduced two new database functions realtime.send and realtime.broadcastchanges. Realtime.send function is a low level function that just simply inserts the given payload, event topic, private flag and extension into the realtime.messages table. What's neat is that this function catches the exception that was thrown while inserting the data into the realtime messages table. And using PG notify, it just notifies the logging system. So it doesn't keep the exception being thrown. This helps a lot when you're trying to use this function within a trigger. Within a trigger, if there was an exception thrown, all the processes roll back. Because the realtime.send doesn't keep the exception being thrown, um, the worst case scenario, the user just never gets the real time broadcast messages. The insertion still、uh, succeeds. Now, the real time broadcast changes function is a wrapper of the real time send function. It just helps you format the data in a similar way of existing Postgres changes of the real time feature. So, the way it works is we can set up a database trigger using either the send function or the broadcast changes function. And whenever a data is inserted, updated, or deleted from our specified database, we can insert that information into the real time messages table and broadcast that information out to all the connected clients. Let's take a look at an actual example. On the left, we have logged in as John. On the right, We are logged in as myself, Tyler, and they are having a conversation with this chat up. So, John is gonna send hi to me. And there you go. I received that message in real time as soon as I send it. So,、um, yeah, I can say something like,、uh, How are you? And we can have a conversation just like that. Now, we're gonna take a look at the code in a moment. But I want to emphasize that when I send something, I'm not waiting for the network request to complete until it shows up the chat bubble up here. Instead, I'm just showing up, I'm updating the local state as soon as I hit send.、Um, so keep that in mind. When I send something on the sender, it's just a local state update. On the receiver, it's a whole network request. So the data gets inserted into the database, it triggers that database. Function inserts it into real time dot messages table and then real time server picks it up, broadcasts it, receives it, and then updates the states.、Um, so take a look at how quickly all that happens. How quick is this? Three, two, one, send. That was really quick, right? I, I couldn't really tell the difference, but This was just up the, updating the local state. This was making that,、um, waiting for that database trigger to happen and receiving the broadcast messages. So obviously, it's super quick. Let's take a look at the code behind this. Let's go over the database schema first. We have a profiles table and a chats table. So, pretty standard. The profiles table pretty much just holds the username. Um, and that's kind of it. All the other columns are not that important for this example. Now, chats table has a sender ID, so representing the sender of the message, and receiver ID representing the receiver of the message, and the content, so text type content. This is the message itself. So, yeah, nothing too special,、uh, pretty basic. There's a sender, there's, there's a receiver, there's the message content, and that's it. Now, if we scroll a bit,、uh, this particular trigger 
is just taking care of a newly authenticated or newly signed up user being created in the profiles table. So nothing special, nothing related to this chat itself. And we have some basic rollable security policy for fetching and inserting the messages. Obviously, for inserting the message, we need a rollable security policy. And if I refresh the page, I am fetching the existing messages using the standard API. So we need a regular select policy as well. So that is happening right here. Users should be able to select、uh, either the message that they've sent or they've received. Other than that,、uh, some policies with profiles. And here's all the magic happens. This function called chat changes. This is a trigger function, which is being triggered by this database trigger down here. So, within the trigger, after insert into the chats table, we are calling this function. And what this function does is it calls the broadcast changes function and it basically passes all the parameters that we need. These,、um, TG for trigger, trigger OP, trigger OP、um, for event operation. These are kind of standard stuff. You don't really need to tweak them unless you really need to. And then table name for the trigger, trigger table name. We can hard code it because this particular function is only being called within the chat's trigger, but、uh, we can also get it from this trigger variable and then trigger it similarly. Trigger table schema. Obviously, it's going to be public, but、uh, we have a nice variable for that within a trigger function. Now, new and old. So, new contains the data after the、uh, update that were to happen, and the old contains the previous data in an insertion. Old is always null. But here we have the topic. This is going to be the channel ID for the broadcast channel. And I have something、uh, going on. I, I like to do this whenever I create a quick and dirty chat application、uh, where I set the, in this case, channel ID to a concatenated string of the receiver ID and the sender ID. In this case, without having any hyphens or anything, but I guess you could include hyphens or st and stuff if you want to. So, it's just a long string of two UID combined together. So, the way it works is only the receiver is listening to the messages. In particular, the receiver is listening to the messages that、uh, they're receiving, right? So, one key component with choosing the correct channel ID is we need to be able to set Robo security policies for the broadcast channel using this channel ID because that's pretty much the only variable that we got. We can work with. So, in this case, I have set the、uh, receiver ID and the sender ID combined together string as the channel ID. And if we scroll a bit, we see the role of all security policy for the broadcast channel. And what I've done is I'm checking whether the real time topic, so this concatenated string here, starts with the authenticated user's user ID. So, obviously, this means that they are the receiver. So, if they're, they're the receiver and they're listening to the channel that、uh, the message is coming in towards them, then they can listen to it. Now, the reason why I set this sender ID is because. So, in this chat application, I guess I only have two people, but I could create another person. I could create a couple. And a couple at example.com and secure password. Now I have three users in here. So let's say couple and John are having conversation, right? Couple can say hi. And John can say, John can say, how are you? Or something like that. And let's say, A、uh, couple decided to talk to me, Tyler, but John keeps sending couple messages saying the video is almost done. If the channel ID was just the receiver ID and that was it, 
then you'll be essentially be listening to the entire messages, every single message that's coming towards you. But instead, we want to be able to distinguish conversation ID, if you will. Right? So, in order to do that, I combine these two IDs together to form a concatenated ID.、Um, and therefore, whenever, I, whenever a user is on a different thread, they are not receiving unrelated threads message. Anyway,、uh, this was just a quick and dirty chat application that I created. But yeah, I really like this trick of combining receiver ID and sender ID to form a conversation ID,、uh, if you will. So, this was a basic example of using broadcast changes, and we're not doing anything fancy. We're just listening to a single table, and whenever new data is inserted into that single table, we are broadcasting it. Now, let's take a look at the UI code. So,、um, there's, there's a lot going on here, but a lot of them is just fetching profiles for other users and fetching his existing messages. But here is the important part listening to the broadcast changes. So, whenever we listen to broadcast changes, one thing we have to do is we have to set、uh, call set auth on real time. This is just like a standard protocol. And then we can listen to the channel. So here's the concatenated string of yourself. So you're the receiver in this case. So receiver ID and the sender ID. Selected user is the sender in this case. So we have that channel ID specified. If we are using broadcast changes functions on the database, the channel is always going to be private. In this case, it's a chat application, so it should be private. You don't want your messages to be leaking、uh, somewhere else. So it's a private channel. Make sure to set that if it's a private channel. And then we're calling on broadcast. Now the event is insert because right here we have set the event to be、uh, trigger. OP, which stands for operation, I believe.、Um, in this case, it's insert. It's either insert update delete or truncate. But we are just listening to insert. If you just want to listen to everything, you can just do this to listen to everything. But we only want to listen to new messages coming in. For the sake of this application, we don't take care of、um, updates or deletes. So here's a, a bit of a confusing part. Within the payload, there's a property called payload, and in there, there's the record. That is the new that we are sending over. So, with this, we get the newly inserted data. I'm casting it as type chat, that's the local type for handling chats. And I'm just、uh, setting a new state appending that new chat at the end of the list of existing chats. Pretty simple, right? And remember to call subscribe、um, after everything else. But yeah, pretty simple. So all you have to do within the client side is a standard broadcast. So for this part, we were only、uh, listening to a single table. But now let's take a look at what it looks like to listen to join queries. So, I have updated the UI a bit. Now we have this avatar showing up, but when we send a fresh new message,、uh, new message, hit send, then for the new message, the avatar doesn't show up because I've configured it in a way that、uh, the avatar has to be fetched. In real time, and we haven't edited that part.、Uh, right now, only the message itself is being sent out in real time. So let's update our code, our backend code, the database side code, to make sure that not only the message, but we also send the profile information as a join query to the user. So what I have done here is I have copied this entire function. Created a new migration file, paste it into it, and then edited it so that the profile information is also joined and sent over along with the、uh, chat's information. So, what I've done here is I'm calling the real time send function, and I kept on saying joins, but 
uh, we already have the chat's information. So, so the actual query itself doesn't need to use joins. It can just select a single profile and then construct a JSON object using the, that profile data as well as the existing new variable data. So we are constructing a JSON object like ID, content created at, sender ID, receiver ID, all the chat stuff. And then we are adding a new field called sender profile, which fetches the sender information from the profiles table and converts that to a JSON format. And this entire thing is a payload. And we are also passing the event topic and uh, it should be a private uh, so uh, true is uh, private so yeah just with this trigger function we are able to send over the profile information as well as the chat information so let's test it out so John says the video is ready and there you go John's profile is showing up right here that means the profile information as well as the chat information was sent over in real time from our database. This was obviously a fairly simple example, but you can expand this and, for example, set multiple database triggers on different tables. Uh, for example, we, ha we have the profiles table, chats table, maybe there's a likes table, and you can set up database triggers on all of them. And if there was a change on any of them, you can broadcast the join data so that the user receives the latest information on messages, profiles, and likes, or whatever tables you have. Um, it gives you maximum flexibility of uh, listening to database changes from the client, and I cannot wait to see what kind of things you build with it.